morning everyone. Welcome to our next breakfast with MSA. We'll wait a few seconds for everyone to be able to join in. All right, thanks again for connecting. Uh, we have a little thing we owe you from the last time, and that is we have not finished the prioritization of the individual uh, uh, quantities to which the final evaluation of the measurement system and the measurement process uh, uncertainty is evaluated to. So we'll start right with that. And uh, Martin, if you'll be so kind and show us how, how this is done. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I will uh, share, uh, share my screen to show you uh, Yarwin. And uh, about the, about the priority prioritization uh, of the of the reference values uh, in the Arwin uh, we have uh, three uh, three possibilities we have uh, specification limits we have process limits and we have process capability and uh, it depends uh, what uh, values are uh, filled in uh, and uh, it depends then how the how the evaluation is uh, is done and uh, the priorities uh, are this one. Uh, the highest priority is uh, the process limits. Uh, because, uh, for example, uh, you have uh, your process uh, that is uh, quite narrower than your specification, or it's uh, shifted in the limits, uh, in the specification limits uh, ratio, or so on. So, in this case, it's useful to use uh, for evaluation the process limits because it uh, better describes how the process really looks like. Uh, for example, uh, the the, specif uh, the specification limits are too wide or uh, something uh, something like this. So the highest priority always uh, is uh, process limits. So if you feel something uh, something here. Uh, I do it, it will be uh, narrower than the specification. Uh, be point. Uh, it means in this case, the process limits will be used for the evaluation. Specification limits uh, will, be, will be ignored. Uh, another or second uh, priority has uh, process capability. And uh, this is useful if your process capability is uh, quite uh, special than, than usually. For example, if it's too high, uh, if you will have uh, process capability 3.9 or uh, 5.8, quite big. Also, it's useful to use uh, process capability for, for the evaluation. In this case, uh, there is uh, some specification limits that are necessary for the process capability and uh, the capability index. And according to this, uh, this uh, values is calculated the, the reference that is then used for, for the evaluation. And the last one is uh, specification. That is uh, something you know from uh, from the definition of the of the characteristic uh, of the technical drawing and so on. So uh, and this is uh, this has the this is uh, the last priority. So if you want to use uh, only specification limits, everything else uh, has to be uh, has to be empty. So this is how how it works in uh, uh, in the iron. Highest priority is process limits. If uh, these limits are uh, filled in, every time uh, these limits are used for the evaluation. Second is process capability. And the uh, last is specification limits. And the specification limits are used when everything else is not uh, filled in. So 
this is how this priorities uh, this priorities works in the RN. And uh, I think now we can go to the today's topic. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so this concludes the uh, topic from the last time. Um, the, um, let, let me offer you, uh, I, I'll just recap what Martin has just said. Uh, it is uh, absolutely mostly the case that the specification is given. Uh, so more or less, this is what we what we get usually. So the specification is taken, and then uh, another thing may be the capability limits. People don't know the specification, but uh, 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 but they know the capability limits together with the specification. And, and if this is entered in, it gets a higher priority. And the least probable thing is that people will know their process limits. And if they do, and if they punch it in, they probably have a reason. And for that, if this is in, it takes the absolute priority. So it's uh, the priorities are more or less vice versa uh, uh, against the usual process. And there is a reason behind that. Uh, the most important question still remains. And it is what makes sense, what is good, what is wrong, what shall we do? And here uh, it is necessary to say that the result of the evaluation is just a hint. It's not an absolute result. And there always needs to be a domain knowledge, a competency which takes the precedent in the end and which decides what is, uh, if, if the measurement uh, device is capable or not. So treat the result from the, from all this evaluation as a hint, as an, as a something what comes from a, let's call it junior member of your team. Uh, and, but the, but the domain, domain knowledge needs to be supplied in order to make judgments. All right, so we have different criteria to look at our uh, results. And they don't always agree. And this is exactly what today's topic will be about. Uh, and, and today we'll look specifically at the measurement system. So, we have come uh, to analyze the individual uncertainties. We have a way of combining them. And the intuitive uh, approach would be to put limits on each one of those. So the resolution, uh, the calibration, the linearity, equipment variation, and bias, they all would have some limits. And if it is within the limits, we would be all right. And this is more or less the philosophy of the MSA, the measurement system analysis, as it is evaluated um, through the uh, CP, uh, sorry, CG, CGK indices, and through the gauge RNR. Uh, the, it's not done exactly in this way. I'll describe how this is done. But the principle is that it looks at the individual contributions to the overall uncertainty. And then we have this ISO and uncertainty and the VDA uh, that look at the complete picture as it is combined together. So how it works. Uh, this is uh, the formula for the measurement system uncertainty. Uh, I have presented the last time. It's written in a 
very slightly different way than it was the last time. Uh, but the result is the same. It is the same formula in, in principle. And we have a limit there that the uh, QMS must be uh, less than or at most equal to 15%. And this formula is just fed here in, uh, into this fraction. So there is a direct length. So how it works? Uh, let me make some uh, assumptions. Uh, I have divided uh, the uncertainties for the measurement system in some categories. Uh, mostly, the biggest contributors is the uh, equipment variation and the bias. And the other things which remain in this formula is the calibration, linearity, and something other, whatever would be defined for the specific measurement system. Uh, and there is the resolution, which remains, which is part of this equipment variation measurement system uh, formula. Uh, but the situation where the resolution would produce a higher uh, uncertainty than the repeatability, this is the repeatability more or less, they are very seldom. So, so this does not happen very often. So uh, we are stuck with the, the two of them, with the equipment variation through repeatability and with, with the bias. So if we make a graph with the bias on the horizontal axis and equipment variation on the vertical, we can make uh, a circle, it is a circle, um, better to say it is, it is an ellipse uh, because the uh, uncertainty from bias is calculated as a bias divided by the square root of three. Um, then we must stay within, within this ellipse. Uh, if it is just the two, the bias and the equipment variation, it would be the black one. And if there are any non-zero contributions from the others, this ellipse would shrink. So in principle, uh, and this holds for everything in, uh, in this area, uh, if the bias is big, let's say like this, it leaves less room for the equipment variation to grow. But if the bias is small, let's say negative like this, it leaves much bigger room for the variation to be there. So if one quantity is small, the other can be bigger. So there is not an absolute criteria for each one of those. They uh, are all related. And the same with the rest. Uh, the bigger would be, for example, the linearity or the calibration. It would shrink the ellipse in the direction uh, of, the, of the red one, of the whatever, orange, whatever it is, leaving less space for that. Um, so that's the principle in, uh, from, from the uncertainty point of view. And now let's uh, have a look. Oh, uh, just, just a te technicalities. This formula on the upper left can be rewritten into these formulas, these two, and this is in the case everything else is zero, and this is in the case everything else is uh, some something else is 
non-zero. Uh, that's what comes out of it. Um, and let's have a look how this is done in MSA, in the, in the original AING um, measurement system analysis. Uh, there is this CG, CGK parameters. And the CG only works with the equipment variation on a reference. So it basically only uh, gives hint on this one and makes a limit there. And the limit is quite straight, straightforward. If this formula needs to hold, it must be less than 0 0.025 uh, of, of the tolerance. Uh, and with the CGK, the bias is added. And we have then two. So we can draw the limits in the same graph as before. We have a bias on the horizontal axis. And we have the equipment variation on the vertical axis. And this, uh, if we take this part of the formula, it creates a line or a triangle if, we, if the bias is, uh, is negative. And if we stay within this triangle, uh, this formula, the, CG, CGK, the CGK, will be more than 1.33. Uh, note that the criteria is vice versa. Uh, with the um, uncertainty, we want to be less than something. With the CGCGK, we want to be more than something. A little confusing, but not, uh, not too much. So we can see the shape is different, just mathematically. Uh, so how they relate? Not very well, I have to say. This is what happens if we draw them uh, in, the, in the same graph. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see that if the equipment variation and the bias, if they are both very, very small, we don't have a problem with neither of those two criteria. And there is a region, this blue region, uh, where they both agree. But this region is limited. And also, it's uh, uh, needed to say that there is a region where both the equipment variation and the bias is too big. And both these methods agree that the measurement system is not capable, is not conformant. But there are two regions, two areas of a disagreement, and it can go both ways. You can see it uh, here in these spaces, where it is above the triangle. So the CGK and actually the CG as well would be less than 1.33. It would not meet that criteria but we are still within the ellipse given by the ISO. Uh, and that's uh, uh, because the, if we would be treating the individual uncertainties separately, there needs to be a strict limit on each one of those. But this does not really, this principle does not really hold for the other ends. Uh, there are, I'll make it purple, there are these regions in the end where this is vice versa, where you would allow quite a higher, uh, quite a um, higher bias. And we would already be outside of that of that ellipse. And this is, uh, I don't have a good explanation for that, 
uh, why we are actually allowing a bias such a big within the CGK definition. And we can see the CGK definition, it, it is a quite simple formula. It, uh, the bias just gets uh, subtracted from a 10% of tolerance. Uh, so uh, this probably is a, has a historical reason. It seems to be quite some simple rule of thumb. But you can see uh, it goes substantially beyond what would the equipment variation be allowed to do. So the bias is in the in the MSA is in fact allowed to make a bigger uh, deviation than the equipment variation. It's not really consistent. That's the way it is. And to show you that this is not just theoretical examples. It's not just what comes out of uh, the analytic evaluation of these formulas. Um, I would like to ask Martin to show you uh, that this can really happen, that there is a disagreement between the ISO and MSA evaluation. Martin, your mic is mute. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I have uh, prepared uh, this uh, simple example. Uh, where we have uh, classic uh, geometrical uh, quantities, uh, different uh, deviations of shapes uh, and uh, and positions. Uh, we have uh, one master with all necessary informations, and uh, for every uh, characteristic, uh, we have uh, the specification limits. So. Uh, this is uh, how our experiment is uh, defined. In the next step, uh, we have uh, an experiment with uh, 14, uh, 14 parts, in this case uh, from some uh, 3D uh, CMM machine. As uh, B-type uncertainties, we have uh, temperature, and uh, calibration uh, of uh, the master. So something that is uh, that is usual, that is used, nothing uh, special uh, special here. And if we go to the uh, results, uh, we will focus on uh, the this first two uh, characteristics. If you look at the first one, you can see that uh, the QMS uh, is uh, about uh, 18, 18.7, uh, and CG, CGK is uh, about 8 or uh, 1.55. So you can see that uh, according to the MSA, according to the CG, CGK, uh, this characteristic is uh, OK. It's uh, much uh, better than. Uh, the commonly used 1.33 uh, on the CG, CGK. But uh, the QMS, the uncertainties, are outside the limits. That's the, that's the first case. Uh, you can see uh, according MSA, it's OK. According uh, ISO or uh, VDA5, it's uh, an OK. And the uh, second example is uh, opposite. We have. Uh, Uncertainties uh, about 11.6%, uh, uh, so lower than uh, the standard criteria, which is uh, 15. But uh, CG, CGK is lower than uh, 1.33. So this is uh, these two uh, examples, uh, what I want to show you. And uh, if we go uh, to the de details, uh, Yaroslav will explain what happens here. Um, the thing is, in the in the first one, where the uh, QMS is uh, beyond uh, is below the limit, is that we are to the sides of this um, of this triangle, and we can see that on the big difference between the CG and CGK. The CG is very good, it is very small, and the bias 
is what makes the CGK to drop below uh, below below the limits, but not to the degree that it would disqualify the CGK. The CGK is still good enough, and that's where we allow the bias to make things work to the degree that the uncertainty is no longer all right, but it still, but it still works. So that's uh, uh, one case. If you open the graphic marking, if you will be so kind. Uh, you would see that the uh, reference value uh, Uh, here is reference value. Yes, the reference value is outside, pretty pretty distant from the region uh, of the repeatability, and the repeatability itself is uh, quite good. And if we go to the other example, uh, here it is the case where both uh, where the bias is very small. It's not zero but it's considerably smaller compared to the region of, uh, of the repeatability. So if the bias is small, there is a reason for the ISO evaluation to give more space to the repeatability. And that's the reason why we are below the 15% with the QMS, uh, but we are already non-compliant uh, with the CG CGK because the CG already is strict on the repeatability. It does not allow the repeatability to grow beyond uh, some limits. And the CGK is only slightly smaller uh, than that. We don't have a master uh, too far from that. One reason for that, one reason which explains that is that the uh, MSA works with the six standard deviations in the formula, which is implying that the confidence level uh, given in the end is at plus minus three standard deviations, while the uncertainty works with the traditional plus minus two, giving the 95% confidence. So that is the discrepancy. And I'll share my screen again. To answer the question, what is better? And usually in uh, these webinars, we say it's not possible to say exactly that is times when one thing is better than the other, but not this time. Uh, the MSA is bad in that. It doesn't make sense to watch each individual uncertainty uh, and give it individual criteria. Uh, it will end up in situations which do not make sense. On the other hand, combining everything, or at least trying to combine everything into one parameter, and if the measurement device is extremely well repeatable, there is no reason why not to allow the bias or anything else, the calibration, to, to take a bigger space. The overall uncertainty, the overall error that we'll make with such measuring device will still be within the limits. So that's the final conclusion. Uh, it is not necessary to make complex criteria. It is not necessary to spend time thinking about how each of these individual pieces of uncertainty needs to be addressed. That's what the MSA is doing. It really makes sense to make a good evaluation try to combine what uh, should be uh, combined together and put one criteria on top of it.
With that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I think we don't have questions today. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please write us an email and we'll do our best to respond the next time. With that, thank you very much and I'm looking forward to meeting you next time. Deary bet, deary bet, we are deary bet. Deary bet, deary bet, we are deary bet. Deary bet, deary bet, we are deary bet, we are deary bet.